In this video, we will talk about electric fields created by continuous charge distributions. Two examples of continuous charge distributions that we shall discuss are the following. The first, continuous charge distribution on a quarter circle. And the second is continuous charge distribution along a line. Our objective is to show the techniques involved in doing such calculations. So let's look at the first problem. Negative charge is distributed uniformly around a quarter circle with radius r. And the total charge distributed is minus q. So we are dealing with a minus charge. What are the x and y components of the net electric field created by this charge distribution at the origin? Note that this is a quarter circle centered at this origin. The first step is to divide this entire charge distribution into very small segments. So one such small segment is like that. I am exaggerating the scale here. Now let's assume that the length of this charge segment is dl and it contains an amount of charge dq. Now it is situated at a distance as you can see r from the origin like that and the electric field that it would create at this origin would be going in that direction because we are dealing with a negative charge. So let's write down the expression, the electric field that this segment here creates here. Let's call that electric field dE, the magnitude of it. So dE equals, if we treat this dQ as a point charge, it's quite simply K, the constant 9 times 10 to the power 9, times dQ over the distance between the charge and the observation point. In this case is r and square that. Now let's assume the x coordinate of this segment is x, the charge segment, and the y coordinate of that charge segment is y, some arbitrary coordinate x and y. And let's assume that this segment makes an angle alpha with respect to the x-axis. We also need to know another thing. The edges of that charge segment should make a tiny angle like that and that angle here let's call it d alpha now the reason why we need that information is so that we can write dq in terms of alpha since the charge is uniformly distributed the charge per unit length let's take that to be lambda so dq must be lambda times dl, the length of the charge segment. But we can determine what dl is. If this is dl, and it's part of a small circle with radius r, and closing an angle d alpha, then dl is quite simply r times d alpha. Now the charge per unit length lambda is the total charge, which is q in magnitude. We know it's a negative charge, but the magnitude is Q, capital Q, divided by the entire length of that quarter circle, which is pi, the radius is r, divide by 2. So that is the length of this quarter circle. So the charge element dq can be written in terms of all these variables over pi r times r d alpha. The r cancels and will give you 2q d alpha over pi. Substituting this result into here, we get k over r squared dq is 2q over pi d alpha. Now note that this field dE has two components. It has the x component going to the right, let's call it dEx, and y component going up, let's call that dEy. So dEx is dE cosine alpha using trigonometry. 
and DEY is DE times sine alpha. Substituting this result in here and in here, we can compute the total X and Y component of the electric field acting at the origin. So the X component will simply become, let's take all the constants out, 2QK over pi R squared integral of cosine alpha d alpha. Now the limit for that integral is when the element is here, the angle is zero. Alpha is zero. When the element is there, alpha is pi over two or 90 degrees. So this integral has a value of one when it's solved and we get the following for the x component of the electric field at the origin. Now let's do the y component from the second of these uh, two equations. So the y component is given by de sine alpha. De is again given by this expression by putting that into here and taking out the constant out of that integral you get sine alpha d alpha. And again the limits would be from 0 to pi over 2. Now note here I'm using this equation and plug that into that equation and integrate that to give you that. Again this integral can be solved and be shown to have a value of 1 and that would give you the total answer for the y component as 2kq over pi r squared. Hence this is the x component of the electric field at the origin produced by this charge distribution and this is the y component of the electric field at the origin produced by that same charge distribution. And that solves the problem. Now problem two on a line charge. Now this is a finite line charge. It's not a indefinite or infinite line charge. A positive charge Q is distributed uniformly along the positive Y axis between Y equals to zero and Y equals to A. So this line charge here contains a total charge of positive capital Q. Now find the X and Y components of the electric field this charge distribution produces at a point distance B from the origin along the x-axis. So what is the electric field here? That's what we want to determine, the components of the electric field. We employ the same technique as we did before. We divide up the entire line charge into small segments. An arbitrary segment is somewhere there with a length, say, dy, and contains the amount of charge of, let's say, d little q. So where dq is the linear charge density, let's call it lambda, times the length of that element dy. Now what is the linear charge density? The total charge is capital Q. So linear charge density is capital Q, the total charge over the entire length, this one which is A. So that is lambda times dy. So in terms of all these constants given, the amount of charge dq is given by that expression. So the direction of the electric field produced by this dq at point B would go like that. In a direction that is outward from the charge distribution and dq, because this is a positive charge we are dealing with here. So let's call that electric field dE. So what is dE? dE is given by the constant k, 9 times 10 to the power 9, times dq over this distance, which in this case will be y squared plus b squared. Now why is that y squared plus b squared? This distance is b. Let's assume that element is at a coordinate y, the y coordinate of that small charge element is y. Now this dy again is the length of that element, so this y is the coordinate of that element. So by Pythagoras theorem, the distance should be y squared plus b squared, square root, square of that will give you that. Expressing dq in terms of dy, you're going to get kq 
q over a, I'm using this result here, dy over y squared plus b squared. So that is this dE. To determine the components, we need to associate an angle there, alpha, let's call it. So this dE has two components. One component is the x component going like that. Let's call it dEx and y component going down. Let's call that dEy. So we have to compute both of them. Now from trigonometry, we know dEx is dE cosine alpha. Note cosine alpha is this distance, which is b, divided by that distance, which we already know, the square root of y squared plus b squared. So cosine alpha is b over square root of y squared plus b squared, where again y is this distance right there. So putting dE in here and cosine alpha in there, we will get the following result. Note the power 3 over 2 comes from multiplying this factor with that factor. To determine the complete x component, all you have to do is to integrate both sides and that will give you the following. ex is quite simply that. Now the limits of integration is the limits for y. It starts from 0 all the way to the length of that line charge, so it's from 0 to a. Now this is a standard integral from calculus and solving that will give you the following for e sub x. So this is the result of the integral. The limits must be substituted and that will give you the following result for e sub x. Next let's determine the y component of the electric field at that point. Now the y component can be computed using the following. So dE now sine alpha. Now what is sine alpha? Sine of this angle is this distance y over that distance. So sine alpha is y over that. So this is this distance right here. As before, substituting dE from that expression and sine alpha from that expression, we, we will get the following result for the y component of the electric field produced by just that element. To determine the complete y component of the electric field produced by the entire line charge, all we have to do is to integrate that result, which will look something like that. The limit of integration is again from 0 to a. So that is the minimum limit for y and maximum limit for y as determined by that line charge. Again, this is a constant. It can be taken out of the integral. And the following integral is a standard integral which has the following result. So minus 1 over square root y squared plus b squared. Now we still need to substitute the limits a, 0, and the result would look something like that. After substituting the upper limit and the lower limit, we end up with the following. And this is the y component of the electric field produced by this entire line charge at that point. So together with this expression, which is the x component, we have the complete result for the electric field produced by this line charge at point x equals to b. And that solves the problem. Thank you for watching.